Each week at this time, we do something that we call a uh, community moment, where a member from our community gets up and shares kind of a brief thought for the day. We've had uh, all kinds of incredible topics. Um, today, your community moment presenter is me. Um, I gotta, sometimes I gotta commandeer the slot to uh, get some stuff done. Um, I'm gonna see if I can put this board because I might have to write. In fact, um, I didn't bother. I keep, I keep forgetting. Are we on? Oh, we are on. <laughs> Keep, keep forgetting about our new toys here. Does that work out okay? Is that even higher? Right, you, can, you, can, you, you can work with any of that. I know. You, you have the power over there. <laughs> um, this thing is supposed to flip. I don't want to break it. We've done that before. Okay, good. Um, oh, by the way, I was uh, I was at Starbucks this morning getting my drink, and uh, you know how you kind of kind of hover there and wait for your drink, and there was a young couple next to me and they were getting a little bit of a disagreement about the way her husband had ordered the drink because um, I guess he didn't like saying the word grande and I heard him say something like, I heard him say, well honey it's a grande and he says, no it's medium. <laughs> so I'm not going to say that, American all the way and uh, <laughs> since I have a little time to kill I, I mentioned well if you're really serious about doing the American thing, shouldn't you be speaking like Navajo or Cherokee? Or like because America itself comes from the Italian, derived from the name of the Italian explorer, Amerigo Vespucci. Yeah? So that one didn't go so well. So all I'm saying is don't do that. Okay. Um, that, had, that had nothing to do with my community moment. I just wanted to share that with you. Because so, so it like, really happened. Um, in 1967, Two guys were sitting at a bar, this is not a joke, um, <laughs> at, in uh, San Antonio, and uh, they, they were two attorneys actually, and one of them was also a pilot in addition to being an attorney, and uh, on a cocktail napkin that became very famous, they jotted out a little triangle, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah? Uh, they j jotted out a triangle between uh, San Antonio and Houston and Dallas, and uh, that was that cocktail napkin was the beginning of uh, Southwest Airlines. Uh, now, they, whether or not the story actually happened, we're not exactly sure, but it is still the corporate legend that Southwest runs with. And that got me to thinking how so many like really good ideas in life just kind of get stumbled upon in simple ways. Um, you know the story behind you know, post-it notes, because uh, I, I wanted to uh, did graduate school in Minnesota, and so uh, it's the whole of 3M. So everybody up there knows about 3M and how post-it notes came about because of a 3M engineer or chemist or someone who was singing in his church choir and little papers he used to mark the pages in the, in the songbook kept flipping out and he made a connection with a relatively useless adhesive that someone had designed at 3M that he couldn't figure out anything to do with, which led him to the idea of post-it notes, which one of them, of course, become the most profitable. I mean, can you imagine uh, a world without post-it notes? You know, but it's, it's just so simple, simple things like that. So just a little bit over three years ago, um, Gary Williams and I were having lunch, and um, we started batting around this idea about, hey, you know, there's a lot of stuff about church we kind of like, and we find a way to do the stuff we like without the baggage of the dogma and superstition. And, and um, long story short, the result is this, uh, because of you guys. And I mean, we just shared the idea with a few friends, we shared the idea with a few other friends, and, uh, and now you're here because you share the vision of building a great secular community. Uh, this week we hit a milestone, uh, what, the 300 in the private Facebook group? and over 1,500 likes on Facebook. And uh, so, good week on that level. Um, a while back, I, I got a phone call. No, this is earlier on in our life, and we were still you know, proving that we could do this. I got a phone call from a sociologist who's actually, who's also an atheist and active in the kind of the atheist movement. And he or she, I'm not going to use the correct pronoun to you know, protect whatever, but he or she was, we don't, we, well, um, it was she. Anyway, um, <laughs> called me up and she was kind of angry 
And she said, my research shows that this is not working. And like, we'd already been in existence for like a year at that point. And she was kind of angry. I'm kind of like, well, what do you say to that? Like, <laughs> fix, you have a flaw in your methodology? I don't know what it is. Okay. So, uh, so it is working. You know, we're here. We're still here. We're clicking along. And, um, uh, and uh, now, the thing I really want to talk about today is how, because this is, I'm getting a lot of questions from you guys about where this is going kind of across the country. Because as you know, people have seen what we did and they want to have a similar experience in their community. First one, of course, is Kansas City Oasis, which is a thriving community. I was up there a few weeks ago to uh, present the main talk at their weekly gathering and um, 200 people showed up for that event. Uh, one person driving as far away from South, as South Dakota to be there, and so you know, word has gotten out about this, and um, uh, increasingly, we we're hearing from other people in other cities. So what we had to do, and this is why uh, this is more of an informational community moment today, just to let you know how you're impacting the world, because there's stuff going on behind the scenes every day. Um, like, so we finally said we better form, and on the advice of some friends, that we ought to form a, like a national entity to. Uh, with which local groups could affiliate, and then the national entity will protect the brand. And we do have to have kind of a defensive posture. We've got a great logo, we have great core values, and we try to have to make sure that they get used for the right purposes by the right groups. So we formed something called the Oasis Network. It's incorporated, so we have Houston Oasis is separately incorporated, Kansas City Oasis is separately incorporated, but now we have the Oasis Network that's incorporated. There is uh, three board members from Kansas City, four board members from Houston, uh, Houston board members are uh, Eric and Johnny, who I don't see yet today, and uh, Joe Vingle, who just walked in, and me, and then three others. That was a good entrance, Joe. How did you, how, how did you time that? Were you, were you waiting in the wings? <laughs> so, anyway, so, and bear in mind, this is just the very beginning. It's not like there's some big national show. This is just doing what we need to do to nurture the growth of what is becoming a movement. And um, uh, and so what we've also developed, just to, and here again, this is just answering questions I get asked by you guys all the time, so I thought I'd get it out here at once. Um, we've developed a kind of a startup kit, kind of a how to start an Oasis community. When new potential new organizers approach us, we've developed an application process with background checks as well. And uh, then uh, you know, once we get through that process, we encourage them to form what we call a launch team, because it's, it's the whole model is a team-based approach. It only works if you have teams of people working all the different tasks that have to make this happen. And once they form a launch team, we can get to the point where they can um, incorporate uh, in their own state and build their own board and set a launch date. That's kind of a rough overview of the process we're working through. Of course, in between, there's lots and lots of phone calls, lots of questions, lots of coaching happening. Um, so, like I said, we have uh, Houston and Kansas City are the right now the only two that are fully up and functioning, but Boston is launching in just a few weeks. And so they have an organizer, they have a board, they've incorporated, they're gonna have their first weekly gathering in a few weeks, the greater Boston Oasis. So if you know anybody in New England that might like to be a part of that, stay in tune for details, we'll get that out. Um, Charlotte, North Carolina, and um, San Antonio, Texas are building launch teams right now. In fact, San Antonio already has 28 people on their launch team. Which I I think some of them kind of got forced into it. I'm not sure they're all, but some very eager people out there, which, which is, makes it very exciting now because uh, some of our gang was at the Apostlecom convention in Dallas uh, a few weeks ago and ran into people from Kansas City Oasis that had similar well, identical T-shirts except the flip, and they, so it's great now we can run into Oasis people in other parts of the country, hang out together. And, um, and I think the possibilities are really big. We're talking about um, uh, you know, joint service projects together now in different parts of the country between various Oasis communities. Um, a, lot of, a lot of people are talking about an Oasis cruise at some point. So, uh, yeah. Hey, come for that. Why don't you apply for service projects? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, this season, I would do both. Um, and, uh, but a lot of great ideas, and, and the neat thing is by, by building kind of this connection of different Oasis communities, we're enjoying um, great 
and I hate the word synergies, it's so businesslike, but you know, um, we, you know we, there's a lot of great connections, and, uh, and we're building something that's greater than the sum of its parts. And so, like, our, our, our logo is kind of a collaborative thing. I mean, Veronica up in Kansas City is a great uh, graphic designer, kind of created the logo, and you know, we've, I mean, actually, there's so many things we've cooperated on already, just in the very short time of existence of these communities. Um, <clears throat> our podcaster extraordinaire, Jesse Hudgens, um, has recently, um, you, you just redone the, um, he's completely reworked the podcast now, so it's going to be an Oasis Network podcast. It will have, we'll have content from Houston, content from Kansas City, and as other communities pop up, so we, the more communities that come online allows us to push out more content on the podcast. And, and if you haven't checked out the podcast, this sounds like utterly professional. I mean, it's just amazing. So then check it out. Um, this is tell you where to, where to find the podcast. So that's just an example. And he's working, well, you were working with folks in Kansas City on that too, right? So, you know, collaboration is producing really neat things, and this is just the beginning. There's a lot more to come. Um, and none of this is going to happen overnight. You know, we shouldn't have expectations. And also, there is no master plan for us. It never has been for like an oasis kind of empire. expanding. An oasis <laughs> empire. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is. We're just waiting for people to come to us. We're not sending out oasis missionaries. You know. <laughs> <laughs> approach us and say, hey, we'd really like to do this, we want to help them. Does that kind of make sense? You know, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to build an empire, but if people like the idea and this can benefit other people, I think let's help people do it. And so what we're doing here matters <laughs> immensely. People are watching. I mean, this week, we have two Skype interviews with, um, I forgot to mention this, with our initial Skype interviews with uh, two new organizers in other parts of the country. Um, we don't like to mention specific locations until we're fairly sure something's going to happen there. And the places I mentioned, we're pretty sure something's going to happen. And so um, this is all coming about simply because you coming here every week makes a difference. It makes a big difference. Uh, just being here, just supporting this community, it's allowing uh, this kind of what's becoming a movement to flourish around the country. And I think we have great things ahead of us. Um, so. Um, I just wanted to give you an update on what's happening behind the scenes and uh, let you know that uh, I think we've stumbled across like kind of a Southwest cocktail napkin in a way. Um, but we can't do it without all of you. Yeah, 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 we gotta add, yeah, yeah, anyway. Um, however, um, and it, it's not always smooth. I mean, we had one um, uh, potential organizer we very, very excited to launch something. And um, he, he went into a terrible health crisis, so we had to back, back off in that city. I mean, things like that happen. Uh, and we're just going to take our time and let it grow organically and naturally. Um, but I think we want to let it grow. Um, uh, closing story, and I'll take a couple questions if there are any. Uh, um, uh, one of our musicians who played, was the first time he played here, uh, came into the room. And uh, during the coffee break, he came up to me, very excited. You know, he had seen the crowd, he had seen the banners, he had heard the great community moment, and he came up and said, Mike, Mike, do you know this is going to be around for 500 years? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 cool. Um, so, um, any, 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 any quick questions at all about this process? Um, yeah. Deb loses and then Mark, and then Luke. I, I love hearing the, the, big, the big picture today. Could we please um, have a, a local update? I've asked in the past about a, a, an annual meeting of, of the Houston Oasis and bringing us up to date on our status. Yeah, we should. Um, um, yeah. We should do something along those lines. We're not structured. Uh, yeah, I've been thinking about the best format to do something. We would love to do something. I, yeah, we should have, but we can't do it. We have to figure out the format. We can't do it in the context of a um, Sunday morning, I think. No. Yeah, we'll have to find another. But yes, yes, we'll do some kind of a local community update. And would love. Well, in fact, one of the things there's going to be an opportunity. We could tie it into. We have started. Okay, now you got to go local stuff. Um, on a um, 
We are starting a long-range strategic planning process with Gary Taylor, uh, TC's musical partner, who is a tremendously gifted, he had years in uh, organizational development, business consulting, and he has worked for big clients, and he lives in Colorado, and he's going to work with us. He's donating his time and expertise to work with us. And part of that strategic planning process is going to involve kind of an open meeting night uh, for community input and to talk about where we're going. So that's uh, that's in the works. Hey, Mark. Yeah. Um, is there any plans to open an oasis in uh, Austin? Um, we there is interest up there. We need organizers. We need people who can take either the role that kind of I played or have a couple people who can share that role. And this is a big thing. We have far more interest consistently in other areas than we do. There's a lot of people that would love to be a part of something like this, but not that many people who maybe have the time or energy at that point in their life to help shepherd kind of get it off the ground. So we need some My reason for asking was because uh -huh. they have a pretty large atheist community oh, yeah. in Austin, and I was yeah. wondering if that would hinder the opening of the Oasis. Or the no, okay, this is a great question, and um, we'll have to make, well, I'd love to make the last question, and you have a joke anyway, so we gotta, um, yeah, uh, we gotta, uh, the, uh, the presence of an active atheist community, or lack thereof, I think in no way, shape, or form hinders what we're doing, because um, is somewhere between 2.5 to 3 percent of the American population calls themselves atheists. Um, how many Americans are functionally secular? You know, uh, the, the non-religious, the nuns, are somewhere up around the 20 percent range right now. So there's a huge chunk of population that would be serviced by, would like to be a part of something like this. There are a lot of people in that 20 percent that are functionally non-theistic that will never call themselves atheists. If you want to call yourself an atheist, that's great. I don't care. But you see what I'm trying to say is the being secular is bigger than the old tagline atheism because that carries a lot of baggage for some people. I was I told you some of this to you guys, some of you guys before. I was out looking for another temporary meeting spot and I was at a local community college in the auditorium talking to the stage manager and she was a little bit leery because of us meeting on Sunday morning. I think she thought that we were a church. I explained what we were about and she said, that's great. That's great. I would love to be part of something like that. She goes, I don't believe in God, but I'm not an atheist. <laughs> <laughs> we have to be smart about marketing. Like I said, if you, know, if, you if you want to call yourself an atheist, fine. We have people who call themselves agnostics, secular. We have Christians who come here, and that's wonderful. I ran into Christians at um, uh, Kansas City Oasis. And um, if anything, they're a little more hardcore than we are up there. So uh, it's. Um, uh, I think our vision will not, and it, it, it will not impede any pre-existing atheist groups, but also I think our potential market is bigger than people that just want to self-identify as atheists. So we better wrap it up there. I've got to segue to our podcaster extraordinaire, uh, Jesse Hudgens, who's going to help you, help us continue to get the word out. <laughs>